Hello everybody, welcome to the Pencil Drawing Made Easy uh, series. This is the first one, so we're going to take it right from the start. So our whole deal today is we're going to take a look and see what equipment do we use. And then we'll take a look at how to use our pencils and things like that. So absolute basics, relax, there's no pressure today. We're just going to have some good old fun. Alright, so we're going to start off by taking a look at what equipment do we use with pencil drawing? Alright, so obviously the first thing that we're going to use are some pencils. I think let's use that guy over there. We're going to use some pencils. Um, now, you can't just use a regular old uh, HB pencil and, and, and that's it. You, you need different um, a variety of pencils because your pencils come in different hardnesses. So the, the way the hardnesses work is that you've got an, a harder pencils and softer pencils. So to, to mark those or to name them correctly, what they do is they use an H and a B um, standard. So the H stands for hard and the B stands for black. So the, the, the way I remember it is the B is black so it's dark and the H is hard, so it's going to give me a lighter drawing. Now, what you want is, ideally, you want a 2H, an HB, B, 4B, and a 6B pencil. Like that. 2H. You can still have an, an H in between, and then an HB, B, 2B, 4B, and a 6B. And here you can also get a feel for how, how they go lighter and darker. So in other words, if when we're drawing with pencil, um, we never press hard, or we very, very seldom press hard. The only time you press hard is when you're using a 4B, a 6B, or even you can go all the way up to an 8B is the darkest pencil that you get. That'll be the only time that you press hard. Um, but, but even then, you, you want to use the pencil to give you the lightness or the darkness that you're looking for. So in other words, if I need to draw darker, I'm going to use my 4B pencil. If I want to draw lighter, then I'd rather go all the way down to an 2H pencil before I press hard. Okay, that's really important because the minute you start pressing hard, you can't erase what you've drawn. So that means you can't fix your mistakes. So we don't want to, we, we always want to be able to fix our mistakes, don't we? So there we go. This, this set that I've got here is a Faber Castell set. Graphite sketch set. This is my favorite one. If I, if I had to recommend any pencil drawing set, then it would be this one here. Let me open it and I'll show you what's inside. We'll do an unboxing if I can get it open. Seems like here's actually where it's supposed to be open. Eh? So let's zip that. And there we go. Now it comes open nice and easy. Alright, so you've, you've got your pencils inside. Then you have got a sharpener. It has got a sharpener. Personally, it looks like a piece of rubbish. And it's got a decent eraser. Um, when, when you're buying erasers, you must buy a soft eraser. I remember from when I was in school, we used to use these uh, pink erasers, and they were quite abrasive and, and rough. Um, we can't use them here. We need the soft, uh, soft eraser. So generally, they're these white guys. So you get them in different brands as well. This is the Faber Castell. Um, what's the other one? Just gone out of my head now as well. Stadler. Stadler is the other one that's also famous. They got a. It's got like a blue, a blue label. 
they they the two main ones that, that I would recommend. But generally, any any of these these erasers, you can just feel it. You know, even through the through the plastic, you can feel the the protective covering. You can feel if it's decent or not. If it's hard, leave it. It's no good for what we want, for what what we need it to do. And the reason why it's no good is because it damages the paper when you're erasing. All right. So next up, I want to show you another set of pencils that I that I found, which is which was quite nice as well. Um, unfortunately, this is not one I can tell you to head out and buy because it's one of our local. Um, Art suppliers, he's had this packaged up himself, but it's also it's got a lovely range in it from 2H. H. Then there's an F pencil. Um, I never ever in my life use an F pencil. It's sort of in between an H B and H. So, for all practical purposes, from from my um, experience, it's as good as an H B pencil. So it's if if you've got an F and you haven't got an H B, just you use them interchangeably. It's or if you if you're set like this has got an F in it and you run out of an HP pencil, just zip the F is good enough. Then it's got the 2, 4, 6 and an 8B in it. So this is, was, was a lovely set. And then it has a few little charcoal sticks as well. Now the charcoals are really, really dark. Um, and if you ever do use the charcoals, it'll only be for final finishing to get those absolute darkest darks. Alright, it's got some erasers. Um, it's got an eraser. It's got a kneadable eraser. So let me show you what that looks like. That's also really handy. We will be using a kneadable eraser. It comes in a little block like that. And then the, the, the kneadable eraser is quite soft. The, when you take it out, I just roll mine into a ball like this. I'll show you shortly exactly what we do with that. And then it's also got, this one's got two sharpeners in it. Now, you'll see this one here has got the little metal sharpener, something like this guy. Now, that guy, these guys tend to be pretty decent, even though they look rubbish, but not the prettiest eraser <laughs> or sharpener, should I say, in the, in the shop. But they tend to be nice and sharp and pretty decent. Now, whenever I'm buying a sharpener, I'll physically go and take a pencil to the shop and I'll test it. So, I'll put my pencil in, in, in the shop. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I'm, I'm there to buy a sharpener and I need a decent sharpener. So I'll sharpen it a while like this. Because I'll tell you why. These are... I'm just, I'm myself a dustbin to throw my sharpenings in. These are blades here are not always nice and straight. And as you're sharpening, they tend to either break off the tip as you go along or Let's do that in this case, just so we've got a better background, eh? So it either breaks off the tip, or it sharpens its skew. So give yourself a good old sharpen and make sure you've got a nice, decent, straight-ish tip. If it's slightly, it's got a slight little hook on it, that's, that's not the end of the world. But you, you, you just want it to sharpen decent. I'm actually at this stage, I'm not using this guy, this was just one I'm using to, sh to, to sort of show you as an example. I'm actually using this guy over here. Um, I went to my dollar store and I tested every sharpener I could and this one sharpened absolute dream. It cost me one dollar and it works like a bomb. So I'm so happy with it and it's obviously got now a little uh, holder for my for my shaving so I don't have to run around for a dustbin. That's probably why I didn't have one on me. Alright. Then there was one more thing in this other set that I wanted to show you. Before we move back to the, the erasers and stuff. And that is this guy had one of these in it. And that is a graphite pencil. So basically what this is, your, your pencil itself Inside here, we, we, we tend to talk about lead, but this here is not actually lead, it's graphite. So this dude here is solid graphite. All they've done here is they've just painted this a little bit, just so your hands don't get dirty when you use it. 
you, you'll see, look how dirty my finger is there, just from rubbing my hand over it. This is a solid stick of graphite. Um, and this is a 6B, so again, you'll use this for going really, really dark. I'll use this guy before I use charcoal, because um, it's made of the same stuff. Charcoal, I find, is, is when you put it on, it's, it stays very loose and crumbly on top of the paper. So I'm, I'm, I'm not too happy with that. Because I'm one of those guys, I don't like to use um, the figurative spray on my, on my drawings. Um, I just feel I've worked too hard, so I, I'm not willing to take the chance of spraying it with something and it turning yellow afterwards. So I rather use the, the graphite stick so I know when I've, once I've put that on, it isn't going to move around or, or tend to fall off as much as, say, the, the charcoal pencils would. All right, now what happens when your pencils run out on you? Then you go and buy individual ones. So initially you're going to buy yourself a nice set. And then after that, you're going to replace them with, with just individual ones like this. So you do need to go to a decent stationery shop to get them. But they'll, they'll have them hanging up on the rack. All your different, um, what would you call them? <laughs> I nearly said sizes there. All your different hardnesses. So 8B, 2B, HB, whatever, whatever hardness you want. You can go and buy them in, in, in little individual ones like that. So you just replace as you go along. So pencil drawing is, is it's really it's a cheap hobby, but a very rewarding hobby. Alright, let's go back to here. You will, however, find that pencil drawing isn't for everybody. And I'm gonna tell you why. Pencil drawing is time consuming. So lots of people don't have that patience to sit down on, on a drawing could easily take you four hours, sometimes if it's really complex, it can take you 10, 12, two days sometimes, if it's depending on the size and, and the complexity of it. So a lot of people don't have that, that patience. Um, so if, if you haven't got the patience, start off with small little drawings and build your patience up. Otherwise, just stick with, say, pastel drawing and stuff like that that goes a lot faster. But your pencil drawing gives you insane insane details and quality the, the, the quality is awesome unmatched as far as i'm concerned by by then then most mediums then your your pencil drawing it's it's absolute for me the basics if you can't draw in pencil you you can't paint you can't do any of the other mediums because the pencil drawing is it works in black and white so it teaches you to see your tonal values and that's something that we're going to be working on a little bit later. All right, so let's carry on with those uh, those erasers. I want to show you how that kneadable eraser and stuff works. All right, so let's go to there. I think we can zoom in a little bit more there, right? Eh? Let's zoom in, say, to there. Okay, so here's your kneadable eraser. Now, what I do with this guy, when I get it, I roll it into a ball like this, and now I'm going to take my hand, and I'm going to roll it into a sausage. Like that. And, and this is how I'm going to use mine. Let's just roll it a little bit more. Like that. All right. Now, when, when I'm when I use this guy, you use this to erase large areas. So let me just grab a you know, pencil over here, and I'm just going to just pop some graphite down onto the page like that. What you use your kneadable eraser for is either erasing large areas. So I'll take it, take my whole sausage like this, and I'll rub it over there, and, and, and that'll lift out that whole area. Or I'll use it for lightening areas. So I'll take this guy and I'll just give it a, a once off over there. And you see how now I've suddenly got lighter and lighter. Then you'll also use it, let's get some 
some graphite back down there again. So let's put maybe over there. Like that. Then you'll also use your needable eraser for lifting out the details. So how, how you do that is you take this guy and you pinch it. Just pinch a little corner like this. So you've got a little chisel point. And out of that chisel point, I can go and drag out little little details. Like that. So that that's what we use our kneadable eraser for. Now, as you'll imagine, as you're rolling this guy over the pencil and stuff, he's gradually getting dirtier and dirtier, hey? So once he's dirty, you don't throw him away. What you do is you just uh, pull him a bit, and you can see, see there's the, the graphite, and there's the clean eraser. So you fold it, and that's why it's called a kneadable eraser. So now I'm going to knead it a bit. And you can do this quite a few times until eventually it's spotlessly clean again. And now you can use this kneadable eraser for years. What is important though is that you, you take your eraser when you're not using it and maybe just put it in a little uh, container or something because you don't want it to dry out otherwise it forms like a, a bit of a hard skin on, on the side. But when you're done kneading him, roll him into a ball and make your sausage again. Simple as that. So once you've got your sausage and, and let's say you've now pinched a piece like this and you've worked and you find obviously that little that little chisel point there becomes dirty so you can't it, it's not lifting off anymore then you just fold him back and you make yourself a new chisel point he's dirty fold him back form yourself a new chisel point and you can turn him around form yourself a new chisel point I, I, I tend to not do that though I, I would first once this guy this area here is dirty because um, I, I leave this guy as a round ball because sometimes you want to just do light little areas especially when I'm working on faces you want to just lighten something up then this little round back edge over here works quite nice to do that okay then there's something else that I also use which is similar but not quite the same and that is this guy over here <coughs> now I know you don't get the blue tack in all different countries in some countries it's called Prestik and, and all sorts of other funny names what it basically is is you use this to hang pictures up so let me open him up and I'll show you what he looks like so this is one that I have used that I you know so this is my drawing one it comes like this and then inside here it's like little strips of, of uh, it, it feels like your kneadable eraser. It's all pliable. So what you would generally do is you, you would now take this and you cut off a little piece like that. And if you want to put a poster or something on the wall, then you would take this and stick it to the poster and stick that to the wall. And there, there's your poster all sorted. Something like, like that over there. Or what I do is I use it for my paintings um, on the bottom corner. So you'd hang it up on the hook. Oops. You'd hang it up on the hook. And then you put a little piece of uh, blue tack at the back. But I also use this for drawing. So I'm going to take a strip like this. And I'm going to roll him into a ball like that. Trying to keep myself clean and organized yet at the same time. All right, let's go back to say so that camera there again. All right, so I'm going to roll him into a ball, same as I did with a with a kneadable eraser, and I'm going to roll him into a sausage. Exactly the same. I'll use him in exactly the same way. Now, why on earth do I have this guy and a kneadable eraser? because you'll find that the blue tack is stickier it's quite a bit stickier 
then the blue tack, if I told, if I, oh sorry, then the needably raised, if I hold him, he's not sticky at all. If I hold this guy, I can feel he's, he's getting stuck to my finger. So by the same token, he can lift off more graphite than this guy can. So let's put the, the blue tack one side, um, and I'm going to roll my needable eraser over here. So your needable eraser would maybe lift up. Up to there, so you still have that little ghost image. And now I'm going to use my blue tack. And it's going to lift out even more. Look at that. So I'm as good as back to white paper again. How cool is that? So in other words, when you use these two, for just for general light lifting out purposes, you use that guy. And when you want to do some heavy lifting all the way back to your white paper, then you use your blue tack. Okie dokie, what else have I got here that's cool that I use? The next thing I use is earbuds or Q-tips. So what you would use that guy for is, is just for smudging and stuff. So let's put down some graphite here again. Let's put, I'm going to use a nice soft pencil. So let's say you've got something like this, and, and now you just want to blend in a small little area. Then you can use your Q-tip. So that will allow you to work in a in a small, because you, you usually blend with your finger, right? But sometimes your fingers are too big. So just the, the Q-tip works great for that. And sometimes I'll even pick up some graphite, and then I can do a little bit of a little bit of small blending like that. Obviously, I don't have enough gra loose graphite down there. But that's the, that's what I use my Q-tip for. Then I've also got two more pencils. Now, these two you don't need initially, but they are nice to have, and you, you'll usually find you have at least one lying around the house. And that's mechanical pencils. So let's get a nice clean area for that guy. So that's our mechanical pencils. The why on earth do I have two? I use the one has got an HB lead in it, or sometimes I'll even put a 2H lead in it. And then the other one I'll put a darker, like a B or a 2B lead in it. So I've got a, a light one and a dark one. So the light one you can use for just fine construction work and things like that. Um, and then, and and you'll see that I've got them with different little um, ends over there. So the lighter color is my lighter one, and the darker one is my darker or the softer pencil. And that's how I remember. So then I'd use the darker one also, again, for fine details and stuff. Because they've got such a super fine tip like that, um, it allows me to do lots of lovely, absolute detail work like eyelashes and things like that. Okay, then I have, as well, right, the, this year was just the, the, to show you what the refills look like that, that, you, that you buy for them. Then I have a steel ruler. So I, I use this for, I, 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 don't, I like to use the steel ruler. Now that one I use for cutting and things like that. Then I also use a plastic ruler as well. So here will look like that. And why I have two different ones is this guy is nice for cutting. I'm not going to damage him when I'm cutting. The plastic one is great for him. just want to draw lines and things while I'm busy drawing. Because he sees he's transparent. Um, it allows me to line up my, my, my ruler exactly where I want it. So if I want to draw a line next to that one, I can now see through there and I can draw my line 
perfectly. Okay. So these are my two rulers. <coughs> okay, then I do have I use <coughs> bristle brushes as well to do to do blending. So this here is a big one and a half inch um, pastry brush. So I use him for doing blending and I use the smaller painting bristle brushes as well. That's all for blending. And then the next one I use is a very soft, super soft mob brush like that. So if I flip over to that camera, you can see the whole, the whole view of it, like this. These, these hairs over here, they're, they're not bristles, they're hairs, they are really soft. I tell you, it's, it's, like, it's like a makeup brush. It's really, really, really soft. So what I use this for is, if you've been drawing, let's say you're drawing over, got a nice big area that you're drawing, and you've got some loose graphite over there, and you want to get rid of it. So then you can use this guy to very lightly just flick it away, out of the way, and then you'd blow, go, and off, off goes your graphite. So then you keep everything nice and neat. And then, obviously, we need paper to draw on, don't we? Okay, so there's a few different types of papers you can use. Here in the class you'll generally find that I use standard typing paper. So this is your photocopy paper that you'd uh, use in the office or around the house. I use this. Now when I do use this, because it's quite thin, I'll use a few sheets on top of each other like that. Because when you've got like a table like this that's got some grain to it, if I just use one sheet, then you'll find this this kind of a thing happens. Let's get ourselves a pencil here. Now I'm going to rub over here and I'm going to try and pick up some of this. Let's see if I can show you the texture. Oops, excuse the head there. Coming, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. All right, let's zoom way in on that. Can you see these lines and goodies over here? That's that's the wood texture that's showing through the paper. I see some guys are saying that uh, the, the, the blue tack is called tiki tack in Canada. Yeah, you, you get all sorts of different uh, brand names. Alright, so now I'm, now I'm taking my pile of paper. So it's at least five or six sheets underneath there. So what that does is it, it, it gives a little bit of spring to this paper. So now check the difference. Instantly see the difference, hey? You got a lovely smooth shading there. So it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you want a little bit of texture, so then then draw on the kitchen table. <laughs> but generally, I, I, I find that I'd rather work in that texture using techniques than 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 this kind of a thing. But if you do want this effect, then go for it. You know, just leave it like that. Otherwise, put your uh, your paper underneath. And that gives you nice smooth shadings. Okay, then there's another type of paper that you can use. And that is a big drawing book, or a drawing pad, which looks like that. So you get them in different brands. Now these guys have obviously got a lot thicker paper as well. So 
this one I've got over here is a um, is a drawing book. Uh, it's an A3 size. Now your standard um, copy papers is 80 grams, and uh, your drawing paper is 100 grams. Now you can get it 100 grams, 120 grams, 180 grams, and and, and so on. So you'll find that the paper is a lot thicker and you can get it with different textures as well. So th that's great. So when, you, when you're drawing on this, same as the, the table texture, you can get different textures by buying different types of papers as well. Alright, so before we get going, no wait, 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 wait. I've got one more thing that I need to show you as far as the equipment is concerned. That is how I work with my pencils. I've taken a piece of wood. Let's see. So I've taken a piece of wood and I've drilled holes in it. And then I've cut those holes, cut it through the holes in half like that. So I've got slots in it like this. So what I do is I always keep my pencils nice and organized. Because there's nothing for me more frustrating than looking for your pencils. So I keep them arranged from hard through to soft. So you've got two H, 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 B. Okay, you can have a B in between. B, 2B, 4B, 6B, and 8B. So what I do with these guys is I put my 2B, my 2 H. H, H, B, B, 2B, 4B, 6B. So now when I'm, when I'm looking for a pencil, or when I'm working with a pencil, I take it and I put it back. If I need to go darker, I know I need to go to the right-hand side. If you need to go lighter, I, need to, I know I need to go lower to the, to the left-hand side. Does that make sense? So let's zoom out again and you can see what it looks like from, from a distance. And now what I do to, because my, my, my table is quite smooth, so what I do to stop the, the pencils rolling around like this eventually, I would take one of these little non-slip mats, again the cheapest chips here by the dollar store, and you do that. So now, now when you put your pencil down, he stays exactly where you've put him. So you, so you can work like this quite fast, and it's super handy, and it, it costs you nothing to make that. Okay, I think before we start actually drawing and stuff, I need to show you how to sharpen your pencils. There, there are two ways that I use to sharpen my pencils. The first one is just the standard, let's go back to here, <coughs> just the standard round point where you've, you've popped him in your sharpener, in this guy over here, and you've sharpened him. That's nice for, for general work, um, but it doesn't always work wherever you need it. Let's grab our paper again. Stop that sheet, he's all dirty now. What's nice about the flat point is, let's grab, say, a 2B and let's give him a quick sharpen. Make sure it's nice and got a nice point. It's nice because you've got because you've got the sharp tip. You can do nice detail work, and if you turn him on his side, you you can do nice shading work as well. Um, the problem with this guy is this tip gets blunt. So if you need to do lots of detail work, you've you've got a bit of a problem. So there's there's two ways to overcome that. The first one is, I, I always keep a spare piece of paper wherever I'm, where, when I'm drawing. I keep a spare piece of paper next to the drawing. And I use that to um, micro sharpen my pencils, you can sort of say, or instantly sharpen. I just take the paper and I'll, and I'll give it a quick, nice hard scrub like that. So here what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm holding my pencil at about 45 degrees. 
and I'm giving it a good old just a scrub like that. So I'm not trying to press hard on this paper to get the, the tip I want. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can zoom in on that tip over there so you can see what I've done. So I call this tip my round flat. So can you see there? So I've still got my, my sharp edge and I can still do nice and shadings. But it's, it's easy. I don't have to hold this pencil so flat. So I can now go from nice, beautiful, smooth shadings like this by using this flattened edge over there. And then instantly from there, I turn him 180 degrees and I'm working this, the finest lines you'll ever see. And it's, it's easy to get that point because as, as soon as you see he's blunting out, you just go to your, your paper and do that. And that is quicker than actually sharpening it. So this point of yours lasts, this point of yours here lasts a lot longer. Okay. Then I have a second point that I do, and that's called a chisel point. And a chisel point looks like this. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to use a knife to cut out and shape this point. And this is when I want to do lots and lots and lots of drawing work um, with, a, with a fine point. Or I need to do l very large areas of um, flat shadings. Then the chisel point works well. Because I, I, I hold him almost 100% flat against the paper. Give me really, see how quickly I can shade a ginormous area like that? Let's move him out the way. And I can now, with this chisel point, I can do fine lines like this the whole day. So, for example, if I'm doing hairs and things, I can do hairs the whole day with my chisel point, which is something you cannot do. It's impossible with your round point. You're going to have to end up sharpening your pencil Every five minutes. All right, so let me show you how I make this chisel point. So zoom out a bit here again. Yeah, that should be about enough. All right, for that, you need a craft knife, just a standard little craft knife like this, or a, a carpet knife will also work well. Let me get one of those. One of those guys, a carpet knife. Um, if you're not confident, I, I suggest you use the carpet knife because the, the, the craft knife, it, it does, because it's got a thinner blade, it does tend to be a little bit bendy. Um, because obviously you don't want to cut yourself in the process. But I'm going to show you the way to, to sharpen your pencil so that there's almost zero chance that you'll ever cut yourself. So what you do, I'll, I'll, use, the, I'll use the carpet knife. And let's grab a pencil, just a standard pencil maybe. Yeah, I'll just take that one. So it's just a standard sharpened pencil. So the first thing I do is I, I get rid of that, that point over there. You can, you can break it off, or you can cut it off. You don't need it. You want a flat point over there. Okay. Now, what you do is you, you open your knife. So you've got a, a, a decent length of blade. Not too long, just enough. It must still be sturdy. It mustn't become all floppy like this. All right, so you hold that. I, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold the pencil in my left hand, and I'm going to control the knife with my right hand. Now, see how I'm holding this knife? So, I'm holding it between my four fingers on the one side and my thumb on the other side. And that allows me to tilt this knife like this. So, I'm controlling the angle that I'm cutting at. And that's all this hand is ever going to do, is going to control the angle that I'm cutting at. My left hand that's holding the pencil is going to do all the 
cutting itself is going to apply the pressure and I'm going to apply that pressure with my thumb. So you'll hold the pencil or the, the knife against the pencil like this and now with your thumb you're going to push. So what I take off is going to depend on the angle. If I have, if I, if I angle it downwards it's going to shave off more wood. If I angle it more flat, more horizontal, it's going to take off less wood. And this way I've got a lot of control. So I'm going to start off on the one side and I'm going to shave off a nice long length of the wood. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expose the the lead of the pencil. Now just a word of advice here guys. To do this job properly your blade must be sharp. A blunt blade is a dangerous blade. Keep your blade really sharp. Rather pop in a new blade if you feel it's not cutting nicely. Alright, so you see what's happened? I've started off at quite an angle and then I've leveled it off along the along the length of the the graphite over there. Now I'm going to turn him over 180 degrees. So my flat side is pointing towards the paper now and I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Easy does it. Rather shave off a little bit too much and then come back and gradually shave off more. Can you see how thin those little slivers are that I'm taking off? Just paper thin little slivers at a time. Little bit, little bit. So by the end of the day I've got this. So I've got Look how much lead is available there for me now. So now I'll take him and I'll just turn him 90 degrees and now all I'm interested in is just getting rid of that little piece of wood that's over there. That's next to the exposed graphite. So I'll gently I'll cut him in quite at quite an angle. So what I'm trying to do is sort of peel that away. So you, you do need to be careful now you don't want to break the lead. Your lead is, uh, especially with the, the B's and 2B's and 4B's, that lead is really soft. So just gently peel that off just to expose that, that lead there now. Do the same on the other side. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take the flat edge of the knife. Let me show you from the side. Taking the flat edge of the knife like this, and I'm going to scrape it. Like that. I'm going to scrape it along this edge over here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that round graphite, and I'm making it flat. So I'll do that on this side, and I'll do it on this side. If you're clever, you'll keep all these shavings in a little bowl because you can use it later stage for other stuff. Scrape all that out there like this. Now you see I'm keeping my finger underneath this to give it strength. You don't want to press hard. You want to let the knife do its work. I'm not pressing hard at all. So yeah, it does take a little while to shape it, but can you see how much how much um, lead you've got to work with? So then in the end of the day, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, this side, that side to really sharpen that initial tip, and that just gets you going. And then I'll often also just hold this guy at 45 degrees like that on the tip, and flatten him out, like this. Let's zoom in there again. Let's take a look and see what does this chisel point look like. Okay, so you've got a, a nice flat point. Let me get one that's been, sh I've taken a little bit more time on. So you see it's nice and flat like that. And I've got a sharp edge over here. Let's just turn him at 45 degrees and flatten that off. 
to get him perfect again. There we go. So, so th there's my chisel edge. You see how nice and sharp he is? Look at that. So I can draw hairs and things the whole day. So now to save myself the effort of having to sharpen my pencils every two minutes into the different into the different shapes, because I, th I think you can see you can and you can appreciate that making the chisel points does take a while. It is a little con time consuming. So what I do is that guy is all dirty. I have two sets of pencils. These guys here are my round points. And these guys here are my chisel points. Now you'll see what I've done is I'm, I'm clever as well. I, I keep them at two different colors uh, or two different brands of pencils. So I always know that those guys are my chisel points and I know these guys are my round points. I don't need to look at the point. Just by seeing the color, I know what point I've got. And because they're on that little stand, I also instantly know what, how hard they are. are they, is it a, a dark pencil or a light pencil? And, that, and, and that's the way I work quickly and efficiently with my pencils. Alright guys, if there are any questions, just pop them in the chat box. Um, I am checking it all the way through. Alright, so I thought what I'll do is let me just show you a, a few... Um, yes, just a safety tip when you're finished with your knife. Just close it. Close it. Accidents happen so quickly, so always safety first. I'll, I'll just show you a few of my... Uh, my drawings so what I thought I'll do is I'll show you some drawings from my my let's draw course and some of my previous courses just give me a second to to get the, that started up This is this is a little freehand sketch. So just popped some bagels and goodies down on the table and sketched it out. That was great fun. Really enjoyed doing that one. And now this guy over here is uh, obviously one of those must do's. Hey, eh? <laughs> the ball will teach you the shading. So here's, here's a ball that's been taken a little bit, a little bit further, taken to the next step. So here's, here's a, a non-reflective ball and all sorts of re reflected lights and stuff around it. Same with this guy. This is a full-on reflective uh, ball. I think it was like a Christmas decoration or something like that. Then let's take a look here. We've got some... Some shaded berries. Like that. And let's see. And here's a horse. Now can you see the lovely details and stuff that we can get in our pencil drawing? And I think this horse took about an hour or two to draw if I remember correctly. So this is all from my, one of my previous courses. Let's see, what else can I show you? Here's a, a, a old teddy bear. So he's, he's done with cross hatching. So there's all sorts of techniques that you can use as well. So it's not just all shadings. All sorts of uh, different techniques. And cross hatching is one of them. And this is one of those quick drawing techniques. Uh, let's see, here's a fish. So he, he's now been done with a different technique. This technique is called scumbling. This is the kind of technique that you'd use when you... When you're chatting to somebody on the telephone and they're talking rubbish. 
the scumbling technique is a nice little uh, a quick technique to draw to draw something without uh, without taking too much time. Let's see. Here's another one that's also been it's been drawn outside. So I've got this little this is wheelbarrow in, in my garden. So I just sat down on a chair and I drew him out probably a half an hour or so, maybe 45 minutes max to draw that guy. And then here's one that my my father drew. Dennis also outdoors. So we went out to one of our, our regional parks, and that's what he drew. Lovely, eh? All right, so let's see what else can I show you. Um, let's maybe go to my, my sketch pad over here. Like that. Okay, so there's just that guy again. There's the original of that guy. So yeah, is is just a little what would you call it? A, just a little test sketch. Before I, before I did the full the full sketch, I just did this guy over here. Again, it was just I set this the stuff up on a table, and I and I sat back and I drew it. It's actually for one, one of the tutorials on our website. And then there's the final drawing. So after I was happy with the planning, then I sat down and I, I spent a bit more time and I drew this guy. Again, it's also maybe two hours, two hours with the drawing, maybe a little bit longer. I'm holding it at a little bit of an angle just to get rid of the, the reflection on it. Portrait. And this is from my from my latest course on drawing dogs. So there's a, a white little diggy dog. And that dude over there. And that guy over there. Oh, and I see somebody speaking of uh, coffee on the chat box, which has reminded me. I also have a coffee waiting for me. Oh, that's great. Alrighty. So you've now heard me talking for an hour. I think it's time we start using our pencils, don't you agree? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use a standard um, paper. Put a few sheets down for my backing. So before the class, I did ask you to print out some some uh, templates. So if you haven't got your pencils yet, just use a regular HB. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some stroke exercises. So that template looks like this. So yes, it is a little boring and I'm not going to do every single one of them all the way through. You'd probably fall asleep on me and I don't want that to happen. But this is so, so super important because you need to learn control over your pencil. Without control over your pencil, um, you've, you've wasted your time. Okay, so I'm going to use a standard HB pencil with a round point. That's, that's all we're going to do for you. Now there's a few different movements that are, that are important and that you're going to use often. So we'll start off with those guys. So let's zoom in over here. Right, that should be good there. Alright, so the first one is point. In other words, when you draw a line, now I'm just going to start off at, at that angle, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. You're going to start off by the one side of the block. And at that angle, just draw your line and stop in a point. So where, where the end of the line ends, it ends nice and sharp like that. Just a little point. So what you're doing with these blocks 
is you're going to draw these guys at the same angle as what the arrow shows you. You're going to fill it up like this. Now what you're trying to do is keep these lines equidistant, parallel, and straight. Now the way you do that is start from your initial one and get judge the distance from your first line. So your second and your subsequent line, you, you, you keep judging from the same one. You judge your angle and your, your distance from those first two lines that you've drawn. And, and take your time with this. Now you'll find as you're drawing, your, your pencil gradually becomes, with the, with the round point, it gradually becomes blunter and blunter and blunter. So what, because what's happening, same as what we did to make the, the flat round point, it's blunting off this, this piece over here. So to keep your pencil sharp is every few strokes, give it a little, a quarter turn like that. And look what happens. We've got a nice, nice lovely sharp line again. And when you do this, you'll actually find that eventually you, 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 you do it automatically without even thinking. Okay. All right. So that's the point. So you'll see with, 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 the, with the stroke exercise, what happens is you're going up and follow the direction of the arrow. So if the arrow points upwards, you're going to start at the bottom and go up. If the arrow goes from the top and down, so then these strokes are going to go like this, top down. And now, see what I'm doing? I'm not using my whole arm or anything. I'm using my fingers. It's all in the fingers or in the wrist. I hope you're not like me and you hold your breath every time you draw a line like that. <laughs> That's why I made the line short. Okay, so with that one there, you're going to go up. And, and I think you can already see it, it's going to give you a heap of control over your pencil by doing this. This guy goes like this. Now, if you do find your first, your, your one of your lines has gone a little bit skew, just correct it next time. So don't, don't, that's why you keep judging between there and there, and not from the previous one. Otherwise, what you do is you end up going skewer, and skewer, and skewer. So if your, your one line's a little skew, don't worry about it. Just carry on and correct it next time. Okay, so this guy is going across, and that guy goes, he goes backwards again and this guy's he's the easy one he goes that way all right so I'll, i'm going to leave the rest of the guys for you to to tackle in that row there the flicks that works like this you start your line and you draw it as normal but as you get to the end you want to flick like that zoom in. I'm going to see how far I can zoom in. The camera will allow me. So I don't know. It seems still in focus. Can you see how it ends? Because of, because of the flick, I've got, it ended up in a super sharp point over there. Now that flick you want it to end, it mustn't, it mustn't end, let's say there's your line, it mustn't end in a curl like this or like that, it must end in a straight flick, so it must continue the line like that, okay, so let's do that, right, this one's quite far apart, I just, because I started just there in the corner to get a, a starting point, 
and when you flick it, you want that tiniest little point in sort of just before the just before the line over there. Takes quite a bit of practice doing this. If you don't end perfectly on that line, don't panic too much. It's more about getting that little flick straight. That's the most important thing of it. Okay, so you're going to do flicks in that direction, this direction, that direction. Same as before. So just carry on like that. Okay, now the double flick. So you're going to start off here in the center. And you're going to go this way. Flick. Go this way. Flick. So again, you want this here to be nice and straight. And you want that there those flicks to be nice and straight as well. And what that does is it teaches you repeatability to get back on that same little line over there. So that if you if you may be drawing something, then you, you can go over the same line and make it look like one solid line. And then flicking again, it's just more practice with the flicks. So that's this way, up and down, left and right. Same as before, but then we start giving it a little bit of a twist over here. See, so now things start getting a little bit more uh, a little bit more tricky. Flick around and flick, 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 flick. And so you carry on. So this one you're similar. Up and flick. Up and flick. These ones go down. Down. And flick. Down. Flick. Okay, cross hatching. The cross hatching one, you're going to just draw parallel lines like this, so you, you don't need to flick or anything. It's just about getting those lines parallel and just to a point. Edge over there. So I'll do this one whole block for you quickly. So I'm working quite quickly because I don't want to waste too much time on this. Okay, and now you do any opposite direction again. Because later on as we go along we're going to be using this to draw, you know, like, like that teddy bear that we saw. This just gives you a feel for for that. And you notice I'm turning my pencil every now and again. So you're going to cross edge there, cross edge there. This guy is quite interesting because now, now we're doing curved cross hatching and that will often happen. Let, let's go back to our, um, our little teddy bear and I'll show you. You're going to have to do that at times. So let me call him up over here and let's zoom in over there. Can you see over here? Here yeah, we've used curved cross hatching and over here it's all curved cross hatching. Most of this is curved cross hatching. There's very little straight cross hatching on, on this this fella. So all these little exercises that I'm giving you is uh, absolutely not not just pie in the sky and, and, and rubbish that we're never <laughs> going to use. It's all stuff that we use. So that you know that there and like these flicks of stuff that we're gonna use for the dogs and you know, stuff like that. All right, so these curved guys over here you need you need to practice them as well. It's not so difficult. Just takes practice, that's all. And and don't be shy, print out a few of these templates. So you're gonna do them this way. And 
these guys go that way. And so you carry on with the rest of the guys just following those directions. And then the last one is nice and easy. Where earlier we went up and down and stuff like that. So now we're going side to side. So let's just start from here. And repeatability. So you start in the center. You work your way out. Because what you want is one solid line. Now, when you're doing this kind of stuff, don't be shy to do this. Your hand naturally curves. You see that? If I if I move my arm, I'm moving it sort of as with the elbow as a, as a pivot point, I won't I? So your arm naturally, it doesn't go straight, you know, parallel with the, this, the edge of the table like this. It doesn't naturally do that. So you'll probably find that you're drawing like this most of the time. If, you, if you're right-handed, and if you're left-handed, you'll find that you, you're going to be drawing with your, your paper sideways. Try drawing straight lines, long straight lines in the paper, and see which angle gives you the easiest way of drawing a nice long straight line. So let me, let me just use a standard piece of paper, and I'll turn it straight, and I'm going to try and draw a line across the across the page. Obviously I'm, I'm quite practiced, I'm judging with the, the side of the, the paper. If I turn it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and now by doing that I can instantly see this one's wonky, that one's wonky, this one is pretty darn straight, and that one is wonky. In other words, that there is my best angle for drawing it, and that, and that really is the angle that I draw at. So do that little test, and you'll quickly find which is the best way for you to hold your paper. Obviously, because I, I, I need the stuff to be straight here on, on, the, on the camera, I have to keep my paper straight. So that's why sometimes my lines will be a little bit wonky. But you'll forgive me. I just know you will. All right, so let's see, we were on that last line over there, right? Eh? So, like I said, it's all about that repeatability. That's what this whole exercise is for. So now you'll see there's a little arrow on here as well, telling you which direction to go. So you're going to start over here, and you're going to move that way. You're going to start over here, and you're going to move that way. So that, that's what you want to do. In the end of the day, it must look like you've drawn one solid line. It mustn't be um, sort of, it mustn't do this kind of a thing. Oopsie, sorry. It mustn't do this kind of a thing. It must look like, or it mustn't do this and that. So you can, you know, you can definitely see uh, two different starting points. You want And you, you can do it this way as well. You must be able to draw a line from here to here as well, so that it looks like one long solid line. Okay. <coughs> Let's zip back there. So this is your strike exercises. Do do them, um, and and do this as many times as you need to. It's it's really important that you that you get a good feel for it. So let me show you what one looks like when it's done. Okay, I see one here. I actually did it differently. Uh, I'm gonna zoom to maybe there. Let's flip that over to there. Right, so see, here's, here's, here's one that's been drawn, obviously. 
I've been able to take my time with the paper at the right angle and everything. There we go. So can you see how nice and neat and parallel the lines are? Keep it like that. So yes, some of them are easier than others. <coughs> but the more you practice, the easier it gets. Right, so, so this one, yeah, I see was actually the, the, the idea was that you'd, you'd hold your pencil flatter and do shadings like that. So you're going to do it in one, one long single continuous movement like that. That's fine, you can do that. Maybe with the one. Do the other one side to side like that. Both of them are excellent exercises. I think this one here is actually a better exercise than, than that guy there, right? Eh? Okay. The next thing that we need to do is from your template, we've got a pencil tonal chart. Now your pencil tonal chart is really, really important. Let's get that guy over there. And in a little bit more. Because this teaches you control over your pencil. Remember earlier we mentioned about your, your, your pencil drawing being all about control. You, you need to know which pencil to use when and so on. So that's what the pencil tonal chart teaches you. Then once your tonal chart's finished, you're actually going to use it later on as reference to tell you when to draw what, or when to use which pencil. So I'm going to just set myself up here, so I'm putting my little wood down here with my, um, show you, my wood here with the non-slip mat. And uh, I think I'll use the chisel points for this guy. He, they, they are better for, for shading and stuff. So the first one I'm looking for is the 2HHHB H. But you can use a plain point as well, that's fine, doesn't matter. Six B four B and two B and there's my B. I've only got six I've only got six slots there. Alright, so let's head back to the tonal chart. So now as I need I'll just grab the correct pencil from the correct place because I I now already know where it, each one is. Okay, so now I'll start with my 2H pencil in this block over here. And I'm going to do it, because I've got the chisel point, I'm going to keep my pencil nice and flat. And I'm going to use the softest, softest pressure. So you'll see I'll hold my pencil way at the back. And I'm going to hold it really light. And I'm just going to do this. In the end of the day, let me show you what it's going to look like. This is now a printed version of it, but this is what it's going to look like. We want to go from really light, darker, 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 darker. Then we're going to have smaller divisions. And at the end of the day, we're going to have a nice continuous shading like that. So I'm starting here on the 2H. I'm going to just give it the lightest little shading. So now try and stop as close as you can to these edges there and there. It's not a crisis if you don't, but it's better if you do, because it's, it's, it's again, it's helping to teach you control over your pencil. So move over nice and gradually. Um, what what you want in the end of the day, let's, let's move over from that to say just a scrappy piece of paper and let's just use say a nice dark pencil. Let's maybe, I want to grab say a 6B here. 
what, what you're looking for is to, as you go along, flatten that point out there quickly. As you go along, you want to get a nice even shading all the way across. The way you do that is to move over nice and gradually. Like that. If you don't, if you if you go too quickly, then you end up with lines and you have to come back in and fill them up again. So well, what you want is to get a nice even shading all the way across, like that. Okay, let's zip back to this guy. Go back to the 2H. So it's just a very light, there's no pressure involved. Remember we said earlier, if we press too hard, we can't erase it later. I want to be able to, at any stage, take my blue tack, and I must be able to lift this entire tonal chart off when I'm done. And I know I've done it correctly. So you can do it in that direction, and you'll do it in this direction as well. Just to make sure you're getting yourself a nice, perfectly even colouring over that. Okay, so can you see there's a little bit of a difference between there and the, and the paper? And it's a nice even colour. Good. Now I'm going to go all the way over to a, a 6B. You can even use in, the, in this, if you've got an 8B, you can use an 8B instead. That's fine. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. Now because we're going dark, you will find that you will have to press hard. So with your darkest darks, you'll end up pressing harder. The lighter you go, the softer you're pressing. So I'm just going to get myself an initial layer down there like this. And I'll press really hard. I want this as good as black. As dark as I can get it. like that. Now I'm going to move over to my B and I'm going to judge as best I can an in-between tonal value. So if you're scared you're going to now put your hand on that. Take another piece of paper, spare piece of paper and just lay it over there. And now I can put my hand down there and I know it's not going to smudge. Okay. All right. Um, so he's asking, am I using the chisel part or the flat part of the pencil? Um, so initially I'm using the, the chisel part, the f this, this flat edge over here. So I'm using that flat, long, broad width to, to lay down that large area like this. And then, like with the, there by the 6B, where I needed to go really dark, then I will use the, 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 the tip chisel part of, of the guy to get a nice pressing hard. 
but still I use the broader width so that I'm not drawing skinny little lines, I'm drawing um, broad shadings with that chisel point. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, just let me know. And so, so in other words, what I'm looking for here is just a nice mid-tone. So just judge them in the center as best you can. Um, you'll often find that the tonal chart, as you're working, you will come back and you'll, you'll fine-tune and adjust your tonal values. And that's fine. That's fine. That's what the tonal chart is for, is teaching you to spot those different tonal values and things. You see, so I, I was initially using that flat point, and now, now look what's happening. I'm using this, the broad width of that chisel point over here now. Because now I'm having to press a little bit harder. Now, because I'm using a B, a B pencil, it'll never go as dark as the 6B. It's impossible because the pencil is too hard. It's not going to let me allow, allow me to put as much graphite down, and that'll immediately mean I've got a lighter, a lighter shading there. That's good. So I've got a nice even tonal value there. Can you see that? So it's sort of a mid, a mid tone. Now. I'm going to complete those two blocks over there by going in between. So that was a 2H. Now I'm going to go over to an H pencil. So I'll, I'll leave that open. So it needs to be darker than that, but still quite a bit lighter than that, so that I can still flip in another tonal value in between. So now I'm using the, the flat edge of the pencil again. just to lay down that initial. So now I'm judging it from the 2H and my B. So it's got to be darker than the 2H. But still light enough for me to add another tonal value in between him and the B. So it can't go too dark. I think that's probably about as dark as we need to go on that guy. Okay, and I'm going to go over to the HB. Let's see, I see I haven't made him into a chisel point yet. So let's just use another HB. So we pop him in. So now I'm judging between him and him.
Whoops. I've got a little hard, a hard edge on there. And that suddenly gave me that line there. You'll find that some pencils, the quality of the pencil isn't as good as others. And, the, and, the, and that's generally why I suggest the Faber Castle because it's, it gives me a good quality pencil. But with even with the best pencils, you'll sometimes find that you get that that hard little piece inside it. I don't know why, but you do get it. All right. So can you see what's happened? It's gone from light, darker, darker, darker. I think that one can now go a little bit lighter. I because of that hard point, I've got a hard line there, so I was trying to compensate for that. So that guy needs to go a little bit lighter. So I'll just take my uh, my needable eraser. I'll just roll over there, just to lighten him up. Now we can even him out again. Don't be shy to do that. That looks better, eh? There, and then my B pencil over here, just get that. There we go. See now we've got a nice one, two, three, four decent little natural steps. Okay, so you're going to do the same over there. So in the end of the day, you're going to have it looking something like like that. So you're going to have those natural steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Darker, 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 darker. Okay. Then what you're going to do in the next one is we're going to start with the, the 2H again. So now you'll take your 2H and whatever tonal value you've got over there, you're going to follow the line and transfer it into this little block over here. So it's quite a bit of a process. But we're gradually building ourselves up to that nice continuous shading. I'm going to pop him in over there. Like that. And now this guy over here needs to go a little bit lighter. So I'm going to really just whisper that one in. The lightest touch, almost, almost not even touching the paper. He's as good as white. But I do want a little bit of tonal value there. Okay, with the next one, now you're going to take your H, follow the, the arrow down, and transfer that same tonal value into here. Trying to now work as quickly as I can. You take your time. Okay, and now the one next to it needs to go lighter in between him and in between him. So can you see what's happening now? You're starting to learn how to judge your, your tonal values. You're, you're training your eye to see these tonal values now. So one, two, three, four steps. And that's what you're going to do. So you're going to do the same thing with the HB, and you're going to do the same thing with the B. So HB, a little lighter, B, a little lighter. And so you carry on until in the end of the day, you've got that nice gradual tonal value range over there like that. 
Okay, and then finally, you're going to take all these tonal values and put them down in your, in your last block like this, but as a continuous shading. So you'll start off with your 2H. And I'll judge that tonal value in this area, but instead of it ending in a line, I'll blend them into each other. So I'm starting off super light like this. And now as I move across, I'm going to gradually start pressing a little bit harder. So by the time I get to here, I'm, I'm, I end up basically at that tonal value there. Almost that tonal value. H pencil. So now the H pencil I'm going really light because I need that tonal value over there. So I think what I can do is let's take this one over here. So because I obviously I haven't done this whole I haven't done him all the way across, so let's just do that so you can see what I'm doing. That's gradually pressing harder and harder. Now we have it to the HB. Susan says it's a good homework assignment. Susan, yeah, it, it is. It really does feel like work. This is unfortunately the the yucky part of pencil drawing, but unfortunately, you know, it's so, so super necessary. You know, if you can draw your tonal charts in your sleep, I promise you it'll help you not just with the pencil drawing, it'll help you with all the other the art you do. Okay, now we go to the B pencil. Now, so far, I haven't been pressing hard at all. I've been just pressing the exactly the same hardness. But can you see it gradually getting darker already? a little bit, do press a little bit harder as I get to the darker edge. So when I get to here, what I'm doing is I'm first matching my previous tonal value, and then I know from there I can go darker. And the cool thing is, I can press, now I can start to press hard, because I need to go really dark. But my 2B will only give me that darkness. It won't go darker than, than anything else, than, than, it, than the graphite will allow me. It's going to get to a point and that's it. 
something guys I'm not working cool why does it neat I'm not trying to stop perfectly on the edge you you try to stop perfectly on the edge remember I'm working against time here okay now we go to the 4b so we're getting there nearly done and can you see the the nice gradual tonal value coming along now getting dark so now we need to start pressing quite hard so I'm not I'm ne I'll never press so hard as to gouge the paper it's about as dark as the 4B is gonna go alright now with the last stretch we can do with the 6B Again, our first is matching the tonal value there. And over here at the end, I'm going to press pretty hard. If you do have an 8B, then go over to your 8B. Yeah, that's, that's the ideal pencil for there. You don't have to press so hard. Okay, if you have gone over the lines, just use your just use your blue tack or your needable eraser, and just you can then just lift out those those last little edges over there. Just to just to neaten it up. Okay, when you're done, you should have a tonal chart that looks like that. So, nice gradual changes of tonal value over there, same there, and same there. Nice, even and neat. Okay. So that's some good old homework for you guys. Now let's take all that and put it into practice. And we draw our obligatory <laughs> shaded ball, eh? Okay, <laughs> so you start off, whenever you're doing anything, you start off with your 2H pencil. And and what that's going to do is going to give you um, very, very light lines. So never press hard with your 2H pencil. So I'm, I'm going to do a nice, reasonably sized one. Let's do maybe something like that. Yes, I'm going to zoom in there. Now, chances are you won't even see those those lines. So I'll just do that to so I don't know where to zoom in because I can't see those lines myself on when I stand up. They are so light. So now I'm just going to draw a, a basic shape of a ball. It'll obviously start off wonky. It won't. It won't be perfect. There's so only mad people can draw a perfect ball, a perfect circle, freehand like this. The rest of us, we have to build it. So I'm gonna just try and get it as good as I can, just with these initial construction lines. Now let me see if I can zoom in there. Those construction lines aren't even necessarily just one solid straight line let's see if I can get there I know it's, it's super light but can you see there's all there's actually quite a few lines on top of each other over there it doesn't matter because we're working with the 2H pencil it's so light that by the time we're done um, I, I, I can even erase those guys 
and you won't see them. But chances are I'll never erase them because they'll simply be gone. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my, my light is coming from that direction over there. So sort of slightly from the front, but more from the left. So in other words, if I have, let's, let's see what we can do to make this. Let's use a B pencil. I'm just going to draw a circle like that. And I've got my light coming from this direction. It's sort of straight from the front. So my highlight is going to be roughly at that area of here. See, it's going to be lightest. And as I go, that direction is going to go darker and darker. So we're going to start off light over here. And then we go darker and darker and darker until eventually over here we like really, really dark. And then he's going to cast a shadow over there like something like, like that. So that's where we're heading towards. Obviously, we want him nice and smooth, eh? <coughs> so we start off with a 2H, and that gives us a nice light construction work. So I'm also going to just give myself a feel for where does the where does the highlight go? He goes around there somewhere. Okay, so for everything from there will always be as least as light as the 2H. So I'm going to start putting him in. So unfortunately it is really, really light for the camera. Yeah, you can see a little bit of tonal value happening there. All I'm doing is I'm not worrying about shadings or nothing at this point. I'm just getting some tonal value lying down there. Okay, so from there we gradually go darker. So I'm going to now use my, my H pencil. And I'll start too far out and work your way back in. So now, now as I go along, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically on the edge of the, of the circle. So now as I go along my, my um, construction lines, I'm using them to get my ball a bit more accurate. I should have enough now to judge. And all this will gradually, so it's going to start off with the highlights and gradually go dark in this direction, that direction, that direction, that direction pretty evenly because there's a ball. So the same distance this way is going to be the same tonal value, the same distance that way is going to be the same tonal value, in other words. I am using a chisel point over here. That's what's nice about starting too far, because if I start too far, I know further away is going to be darker anyway. So that's fine. That gives me a good idea of how to judge my, my tonal values. Let's go to an HB. And, th and don't be shy to, to turn your page as well.
quite acceptable to turn your page. So if it's easier for you to work like this, then, then, then do that. Remember, it's because, because of the way your, your wrist action and your hand action and your arm action works. It's just easier to turn the page. So again, I'm working really, really quickly because uh, we are working against the against the clock. You take your time. Get yourself a nice little need ball. Bella's asking, do I only chisel point my soft pencils? No, I chisel point all my pencils. I've got two sets of pencils, Bella. So I use, and e each one of them has a round point, and each one of them also has a chisel point. Okay, so over here, I want to give it a little bit of a, little bit of reflected light of the table. So I'm going to make that slightly lighter over there. So I'm going to go all the way down with the HB, and I'm just filling in this here, just adding tonal value. That little edge over there will be lighter. So let's go over to a B pencil. So now I'm using my... I've got quite a flat point over there. So I'll just do that, just to flatten it out. and work as far as you can in the correct directions. Now this area here is starting to get quite far away from the from the light. Now what I want you to notice something is, I, I haven't gone back there. That ended up at a HB because that was this distance away from from this same distance from there to there, and from there to there is the same tonal value, everything further from there is darker. Okay, for now I'm just going to give this guy a U-turn so I can get this rounding right over here. Tuning him better and better. But I think we can turn him back the right way around now. And now we can start adding fuller contrast in here. So 
So all the while I haven't once pressed hard, not at all. Okay, now we'll go to 6B, and this should now give us our final, our final docks. Like that. All right. So now let's add a, a shadow on the on the table. So let's go back to say a two B over here. Okay, what's that? Yeah, it's a two B. So we'll, we'll have a shadow that's doing maybe something like that. So what a shadow does is right up against the object. It's 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 dark. And then the further away it goes, the lighter it gets. So I start with the, say the 2B, and I'll go to say an an H pencil for that last little bit of a edging over there. I think we can darken this up over here. Make that ball a bit more solid. Same over there. Right up against the ball. Okay, back to a 6B now. And now we can add extra darkness of the 6B on the ball itself. So just on that edge and fade him in. So as you go inwards, press lighter and lighter. Okay, now you see I've just left a little patch of just a shade lighter there on that edge. And that's just giving me it's not very much lighter. But it's just giving me a little bit of reflected light, a feeling of reflected light over there. It's bounced up off the table. Okay. Let's uh, zip back to here. <laughs> All right, I'm sure your brain must be buzzing now because I've shoved so much information into your head today. But it's absolutely super critical information. Watch this video over and over and over again until it sinks in and it makes sense and do those exercises you'll be so glad you did yes, when when it comes to the to the next classes i promise you and then please post your 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 drawings and your exercises on the forum so that we can take a look at it and if you've got any hassles go and ask me questions that's what the forum's there for okay guys i hope you've enjoyed your 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 class today 
Next week, we're going to take what we've learned today and we're going to build on it. And we're going to go even a step further. I hope you have a wonderful week. See you later.